Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Have you ever wondered why it is that we, that is humans, why are we so susceptible to error? My answer, stupid pride. The biblical doctrine of total depravity affirms, among other things, that the impact of the fall hits us, all of us, on all fronts. It's not just our wills that are fallen, but every faculty we possess, including our faculty of thinking. We err in our thinking because we are the children of Adam. While I'm willing to concede that it is possible to err without falling into sin, I would argue, however, that errors are a fruit of sin. I don't confess before the Lord the the typos I may be prone to, but I believe I would not be prone to them had I not been born a sinner. This does not mean, of course, that to be a non-sinner makes one omniscient. There is, after all, a rather great difference between knowing, or rather not knowing, everything and knowing what just isn't so. That we can err without falling into sin, however, doesn't mean that sin never contributes to our errors. In fact, I suspect our sin impacts our thinking far more than we like to confess. In part, because we don't like to confess. We not only don't like to confess doing wrong, we don't like to confess being wrong. To acknowledge error, even if that error is not in itself sinful, hurts us right where it counts in our pride. We often fall into error by believing what we want to believe. We stay in that error. We double down when we refuse to acknowledge we were wrong in the first place. This afflicts us not just individually, but corporately. That is, I not only want to be right, but want to be in the right crowd We're a tribal people and are quick to not only believe what our tribe believes, but to believe that what other tribes believe is not just wrong, but stupid. It's one thing to admit that I was wrong about this or that. It's another thing to admit that not only was I wrong, but so were my ancestors, my heroes, all those closest to me. If the problem is pride, and it is, the solution is humility. We're not called to a skepticism that disguises itself as humility, where we refuse to make any assertions, where we proudly claim to know that nothing can be known. Instead, we're called to be bold about the truth and humble about ourselves. We're called to not only conflate the scripture itself and our understanding of it, we're called to listen like children and to check like Bereans. Jesus has promised us that the Spirit will lead us into all truth. John 16, 13. This must not lead us to affirm that we now have all truth. 
If he is leaving us there, it must mean that we're not there yet. If we insist we've already arrived, we won't move. And we plant ourselves in our ignorance. His word is truth. It tells us we yet struggle with sin in our hearts and in our minds. He, however, has promised to conquer all his and our enemies, including our foolish pride. He is washing us with his word, and he will finish what he has begun in us. Friends, my hope, my prayer, is that Jesus is pleased to use this little podcast as a part of that process by which he cleanses us. That as we talk of the things of God, as we bring to bear the word of God, that we are changed and we better reflect his image. That's what we're seeking to do. And we're seeking those who would like to come alongside and encourage us as we do so. Would you pray for this ministry? Would you let your friends know about it? And would you consider financially backing the work that we're doing at Dunamis Fellowship? We're grateful for the opportunity. We are grateful more than anything to have your attention and the opportunity to speak of these things with you. God bless you. As we continue our ongoing journey into the book of beginnings, uh, if you were with us last week, we considered verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1. Verse 3 begins, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. <sighs> yeah, we, we most certainly could easily pause right here and spend the rest of our lives contemplating the glory of just these seven words. Excuse me, there's 11 words. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Christians have, by and large, almost exclusively uh, 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 affirmed throughout uh, church history the idea that we call creation ex nihilo. Creation ex nihilo means out of nothing. And like a lot of these kinds of Latin phrases, there's something very helpful about it, but there's also a danger connected to it. Creation ex nihilo, the function of this language of affirming that God creates out of nothing, is to guard against the idea that... Uh, reality or the universe or matter itself is somehow uh, self-existent or eternal. In fact, every other uh, view that is not a view of creation ex nihilo at the end is some sort of view uh, of uh, pantheism, where the substance of reality is made out of the substance of God himself. Well, it's important for us to affirm that God is everywhere, that God does uh, uphold and sustain all things, that in him we live and move and have our being. But we're also called to recognize the radical distinction between the creator and the creature. Creation ex nihilo helps hedge against confusing creature and creator. God is distinct from his creation and God is sovereign over his creation, which is another reason why we wouldn't take the view that the universe itself is eternal. Well, what's the danger of this language of creation ex nihilo? Well, ex, I assume you would recognize, is a suffix, which means out of. That's why we have exit signs. That's how you get out of a room or out of a building. Uh, and nihilo is the word for nothing, out of nothing. And so uh, 
the danger is that when we turn out of, or rather turn nothing, maybe that's a better way to put it. If we turn nothing into a place, then we diminish the glory of what's happening here. Well, how would you turn nothing into a place? Well, if you think that God said, let there be light, and there was light, that, God, that teaches creation ex nihilo, and it does, and that creation ex nihilo means that God called forth the light from the nothing, then you are really describing nothing as a place. As if nothing was backstage, and when God said, let there be light, he's commanding that light, which is backstage, to come onto the stage. Which, by the way, would be magnificent and glorious and quite an accomplishment. You know, I'm able to flip switches or tug on uh, uh, little dangling things on lamps and create or have light come on. Or I'm able to say to uh, Siri... Siri, turn on my torch. I call it a torch because she speaks in an English accent. <laughs> turn on my torch. And there out comes the light. But that's not the same thing as what God's doing. He's not turning on the lights. What I want us to get is not only is there no light backstage in a place called nowhere or nothing, there's not even an idea of light. This is the power of God. He speaks and reality happens. In fact, uh, this uh, creation ex nihilo is also sometimes called creation by fiat. Fiat, F-I-A-T. Uh, not the Italian uh car. Fiat is a Latin term. Uh, I think it's an infinitive of the verb to be. The divine fiat is, or maybe it's an imperative instead of an infinitive. Let it be. Let the light be. So that's what God's doing. He's commanding that it should come to pass. Helping us, or when we get this, it helps us remember what I, a point that I've made a hundred times. We must understand in terms of God's sovereignty first, that God has sovereign authority over all things because he made all things. And secondly, that God is sovereign in power, not because he's accumulated all the power, but because he is the source of all the power. God says, let there be light and there is light. May he be pleased to illuminate our hearts and minds that we would more fully enter into his glory in the creation of his world. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsproljr.com and join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.